Oh, look at that. How many people have liked this and it hasn't even started yet? Very nice of you. But this is our last coral reef lesson. Usually I'm really looking forward to starting a whole new topic, but I've really enjoyed learning about coral reefs. All right. <sighs> Let's get going then. <clears throat> Sorry, can you, can you hear my neighbour chopping wood? It's really annoying, isn't it? One day I'll have an office and not just be doing this in the corner of the kitchen. Okay. Flipping you round. Oh, hello Science Alliance! It's time for our last coral reef lesson. So um, I've got quite, I've, I'm really excited about this one actually because I've had loads of bits of fossilised coral that I've found uh, on the east coast sort of near where I live um, of England for ages and I didn't really know anything about it and for this lesson I got it identified. Like looking stuff up on the internet is fun, reading interesting facts is fun but there is nothing like having an expert who's got loads of knowledge in their head just tell you stuff. I mean, how long would it have taken me to work out what that was, uh, like from the internet or a book? But, ah, oh, just, ah, oh, such a privilege to have people tell you things. So I'm gonna share that knowledge with you. We will do the first half of the lesson about fossilized coral, um, how you maybe can start to identify fossilized coral, and then we'll do a recap at the end. So if you've seen all the other coral lessons, then uh, yeah, stick around for the recap one. Okay, so if you live in the UK like I do, you might be a little bit disappointed by the fact that millions of years ago, the UK was covered in quite shallow, warm seas. This has always been a source of irritation to me because it means we have very little chance of finding any epic dinosaur skeletons. You don't get T-Rex skeletons in the UK because it's covered in warm tropical sea. But if you want fossilized coral, the UK is an excellent place to be. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you a few things about coral <coughs> that will help you to start to identify if you find any fossilized coral, which it is quite easy to do uh, anywhere in the world, but you know, I'm in the UK. So the first facts, corals can be solitary or colonial. I feel like it's not rocket science this, they, they live on their own or they live in colonies together. Um, the colonial coral, uh, probably more interesting because it can be lots of different shapes, which depends on where they live. So the, it'll make sense when I tell you, like rounded coral colonies could withstand rough waves. So this isn't one coral animal. This is a skeleton formed by loads and loads and loads of tiny little polyps, coral animals that would have all lived on this skeleton together. And you can tell that the round shape is just a bit more robust, right? Whereas something like this, this beautiful branching fire coral, it's, you can tell it's more delicate. If a wave hits that, it's just going to snap off, isn't it? So if you see branching coral, it was probably living in calmer, stiller water. Um, when, when we did lesson two, <laughs> we made these, it was one of my favourite lessons, we made these models of coral. So this, this is a model of something called a polyp. It is the animal, like all the soft bits of the actual animal that is the coral. So this doesn't get fossilised, right? This just gets, when it dies, it gets eaten by something or it, it just disintegrates away. It's the coral skeleton that gets preserved. 
in lesson two, I just got some white paper and went, ah, oh, the, the coral is sitting in like a cup of skeleton. So we need to talk about the skeleton a bit more now, because yeah, that's the bit that you find. So the whole little round, well, I mean, I'll show you. Like here's one of the fossilized corals that I'm gonna show you. This, this round circle is called the coralite. Here we are. You hear this talked about a lot when you talk about fossilized coral. This is the coralite. It's just the space where the single polyp goes. And in the center may or may not be a pillar called the columella. Not all coral has it. Um, but most coral, you'll see the scepter, which we did talk about in lesson two. You remember we were looking at how they've got to increase the surface area of their stomachs to help them digest things. And there's a lot of tissue on top of the scepter. Uh, so, for example, to give you an idea, you can tell that this coral was colonial. So each one of these little dots is a little coralite, which the individual polyp animal would have sat in. So you, you can so they were all sharing this one skeleton. Yeah, you might say. Whereas this coral was solitary. I've put note, it still had friends. It just wasn't attached to them. So this is one coralite and then sort of fairly close by. You would have another coralite, but this is solitary coral. It's living on its own. It's not sharing a skeleton. <coughs> Excuse me. So we haven't talked at all about classification when it comes to coral. I love the classification bit. Um, scientists separate life on Earth into different categories, right? You've got your animal kingdom, plant kingdom, like fungus kingdom. Coral is an animal, so it's in the animal kingdom. Animals get separated into different phylums. And coral is in the nidaria, the sea is silent phylum, which means it's got jelly-like stuff between its cells. You remember that when we made the model, we said that the glue was the sort of jelly-like stuff between its cells. Um, all, so um, like jellyfish and nidaria and sea anemones as well. Um, but you separate nidaria into different classes and then those different classes are in different orders. This is where it gets interesting for us. So this word, you just say it as it's written. Scleractinian, scleractinian coral. Scleractinian coral, it's just all the coral that we've talked about so far. It's hard, it's reef building coral. If, if I've mentioned the word coral, I've meant scleractinian coral. It's the only kind of coral alive uh, today from this order. But there used to be rugosa coral, which is now extinct. And tabulate coral, which is also now extinct. So obviously, if we're talking about fossils, we get to talk about the extinct stuff. Here we go. So just very quickly, uh, tabulate coral, it's all colonial. So um, they're coralites, you remember? The little cup-like things where the single creature lives. They're like tiny little spaghetti strands. They're very long tubes, but they're only about three millimetres across. And they were first around 480 million years ago. Rugose coral, it's pretty much the same age. I think it was around a tiny bit later than the tabulate, and it's more similar, similar, similar to the scleractinian. Uh, both of these guys can be colonial or solitary. Right, Whew, I've talked for a long time. I'm going to ask you a question. So here's, here's, I'm sorry, if you've got the printout from my Facebook page, I didn't notice this was royalty free so I could use it. We don't say Mississippian era. This uh, should say the Carboniferous period, this one, not the Mississippian period. Um, yeah, rugose coral and tabulate coral were around until the Permian times. If you saw my dinosaur show, you know that there was a mass extinction here. The biggest extinction that Earth has ever known. The vast majority of living things were wiped out. So this kind of cleared a space for scleractinian coral to jump in. Right, so my question to you is, <clears throat> land on Earth, it used to be split up. And then about 250 million years ago, it all, it all came together. Why was that bad news for the Rugosa and the Tabulate Coral? So the Rugosa Coral, the Tabulate Coral, it's been around for millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, it's perfectly happy. And then, I mean, obviously a massive volcano goes off, a lot of complicated things happen. But one of the things that happens is that Pangaea forms, and all the land sort of comes together. Why is that gonna be bad news for Rugosa and Tabulate Coral? I should say this is massively oversimplified, like there were loads of, loads and loads of complex reasons for why they went extinct. But this can't have helped. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I don't know, 10 seconds, because they were coming out with a lot of different and interesting answers on Facebook to this one. Oh. 
Some people were saying because there was more, because there was more land and less sea. And I was like, well, if the land comes together, does that mean there's less sea? The answer that I've got is um, there's not as much coastline, right? So coral, generally speaking, certainly not all the time, but it prefers the coastline. So if there's fewer coasts, um, there's less sort of surface area, if you like, um, for the coral to grow along. That's going to be a problem. Another puzzle. Oh, I was so happy when I learned this. I didn't know this. Coral forms a new growth ridge roughly every day. So if you count the growth ridges on coral, you get about 360 per year. Just to give you an idea, I must admit, I don't know what the growth ridges are on this, but here's a piece of coral that I've got. You can see it's made up of lines, okay, just to kind of give you a vague idea. I think it's, it's about 200 in one centimetre. So anyway, coral that we have today, it's got 360 roughly growth ridges per year. That's about one a day. But if you look at fossils of 400 million year old Devonian coral, they've got 400 ridges per year. What conclusions can you draw from this? Or might you draw from this? I'm just going to do teacher face at you to help you think. Why would an ancient fossil 400 million years ago have 400 growth ridges per year and a model, modern fossil only has 360? Some people, say, some people made the absolutely beautiful point that it was the Carboniferous period, so more carbon, and they know that the skeleton of the coral is made of calcium carbonate. Such an amazing answer. So there was more carbon around available to make those skeletons, but that is not the answer. No, it grows a new growth ridge every day. Coal grows a new growth ridge every day. But it's 400 in the Devonian period. Um, the answer is, a lot has changed in 400 million years. One of the things that has changed is that Earth has slowed down. Earth's spin has slowed down. So Earth is spinning, right? And one spin is one day, okay? When it goes back to the same position as, again, that's one day. And a year is how long it takes Earth to go around the sun. So Earth used to be spinning faster. So it, you just got to fit in more days until it got back to the same position again. It had gone like one year around the sun. So there were about 400 days in a year. And you can tell this from coral. Ah, I just love it. But there's no such thing as subjects, is there? It's like biology and paleontology and physics all coming together. OK, anyway, right, moving on. I got my fossil identified. Um, there are a few places you can go if you find a fossil and you want to know what it is. You can just email the Natural History Museum in England and London and they will just tell you the answer like within a day they had emailed back i couldn't believe it um but there's also a lot of uh, they've got a facebook page as well i had a lot of help from the fossil hunting community page led by the yorkshire fossil hunter cannot recommend highly enough if you're on facebook look them up this is the photo that i put up in the facebook group these are the four fossils that i was pretty sure were coral and i said can anyone give me any more details why did i put a 50p in the photo why did i put a 50 you should always put a 50p coin or a ruler in the photo. Yeah, I've kind of given it away, haven't I? It's for scale, so that they could tell what size the fossils were. You should also uh, make sure that you can tell, that you tell them where it was found as well. There's, be as specific as possible, ideally. Okay, so right, let's have a look at this first one then. I think you might be able to tell me some facts about this already. Here we go. So I wanted to, I, I wanted to show you the dry version and then show you how much more detail you get when a fossil is wet. It's really cool. So here we go. What can you tell me, first of all, I think we've I've probably spoiled it a bit, haven't I? I think we've mentioned it. What can you tell me about this coral straight away? What word could you use to describe it? Oh, look at that. Well, hopefully you're saying that it's... Um, <coughs> It's a solitary coral. It's not part of a colony. That is just one coralite on its own. So it's a solitary coral. Uh, the Facebook group, wonderful experts in the Facebook group told me that it is a rugose coral. So you're talking 300 million years old. But the, the person for a while, they couldn't quite work out which one it was out of these two. It could be a coninchophyllum. 
Coninkophyllum or a Dibunophyllum, I'm going to say. They weren't sure. They couldn't quite make out the detail. They weren't sure which one of those that it was it. Uh, so I thought I'll show you those diagrams. Look, the Dibunophyllum has got this, this kind of central ridge and the Coninkophyllum hasn't. Have a look at it again and see if you can tell. Is it the Coninkophyllum or is it the Dibunophyllum? With apologies to anyone who speaks uh, Latin. Which one do you reckon? Can you, can you see a growth ridge or not? Is it the one beginning with K that has no, no central ridge or is it one beginning with D that does have a central ridge? Hopefully you said it's that one. It's the Dibuna Phanum because you can see the growth ridge. There it is, right in the center. So I thought, that's just a, ah! I thought, what? It's just a really lovely way of kind of getting an insight into what these people, these amazing experts are actually looking for when they're looking at corals. Let's have a look at this other one. I feel like you're going to be able to tell me some stuff about this as well. I actually sanded this one off a bit uh, to see the ends better. Here we are. So this is just another piece. This is incredibly common, actually. You find this anywhere. Again, the difference between it wet and dry is amazing. So here's the here's what it looks like dry. And then if you put some water on it, look, all these lovely details come out. Look at all those little coralites there. Let's get the hand lens out. Wow. Oh, so beautiful. So what words can you tell me how you can describe this one? So each of those is a little coralite. So gorgeous, isn't it? I've had this for ages, but it just... It really doesn't look like anything until you get it wet and maybe sand it down a bit. I don't know what a fossil expert would think about that. What words are you coming up with? Is it, <coughs> excuse me, is it colonial or is it solitary? It's colonial, isn't it? Hopefully you're, you're, I mean, I suppose you might have said solitary because it looks like they're all individual, but these would all have been attached actually to a, a bigger bit of the skeleton. So these are kind of like sort of spaghetti stands sticking upwards. They think, yes, that each individual tiny little polyp would have been sitting on each one of these little coralites here. Um, but yet yeah, if they're, if it's a kind of bunch of spaghetti like that, then generally speaking, it's a colony. This one is called Siphonodendron. Um, again, like 300 million years old. It was alive, and now we have a print of it. It's just uh, it's incredible. Um, this one is, they couldn't really make out exactly what it was because it's too squished apparently, but it has something really interesting on it that I hadn't noticed until I took a photo of it. See if you can spot something interesting. So this is the, this is the coralline. So hopefully you would be able to tell me straight away that this is a solitary coral. So it would have been sitting on a rock or whatever like this with the polyp sat here in this coral light, the little cup. <clears throat> if I give it a spin, do you spot anything weird? I mean, obviously it's weird. It's a 300 million year old. I hadn't spotted it until I started taking the photo. And then I was like, hey, what's that? You see, this thing here, this is not a part of my coral. This is actually the remains of a different animal uh, called a bryozoan. So then they're not that closely related to coral, although they seem quite similar to me. Um, teeny tiny little things. I think maybe each one would have lived in that little hole and they made colonies as well. And this is a calcium carbonate skeleton that it uh, it secreted. But yeah, they used to, they just kind of latch onto things. I think they can be a bit problematic, but they do get eaten by uh, fish. Um, yeah, bryo, bryozoans are still alive to this day. So I didn't realise until we did this lesson that I have a fossilised bryozoan as well. Right, by beautiful coincidence, um, the very day after I had posted my things in this Facebook group and got these beautiful answers, I went back to the Facebook group and someone else had posted another post and they, and they, and they needed help. And I thought, oh my days, I reckon that my lot might actually be able to help them after we've done this lesson. Here we go. So they've put, hello everyone, I've joined this group because I found this photo here, on the beach on the holy island of Linda's farm, that's like right on the border between England and Scotland, and I'm not sure what it is. It's as long as my finger. I'm hoping you lovely people can identify it, please. What do you think? What have they found there? Can you use, can you, can you help them out at all? Don't forget, they haven't got a clue what it is. 
I should, it might help you actually. I didn't really show you a side on view of my coral, but this is one of my sort of spaghetti scrams of coral. So that's, that's what it looks like cut through. So that would be like the calyx. Uh, sorry, that would be the coralite. And that's what it looks like from the side, yeah? Because, because they're tubes. What do you reckon? How many words are you going to use to describe this thing that they found on a beach? They know that that's a fossil. That's all they know. In fact, they haven't even said it's a fossil, have they? They haven't got a clue. So I hope that you're saying it's fossilised coral. I mean, obviously, it's not because it, of the lesson. It's not going to be an ammonite, is it? Um, it's a solitary coral, right? It's just one on its own. Someone pointed out that it was rugose coral. And I thought this was interesting. It's important that you know where you found the thing because someone else said... Um, it was, it's from the Cretaceous period. And then someone else said, no, it's too far north. You don't get Cretaceous rocks there. So it must be Carboniferous. So I thought, that's interesting that quite a lot of coral identification or fossil identification is just knowing where it was from and therefore it must be one of these few things. Okay, right. Are you ready for some quick recap games uh, before we finish our coral reef module completely? We're gonna play bingo. So if you have been to my Facebook group, and you've got the printout, you should have a grid of uh, 16 different words in front of you. If you haven't got it, don't worry about it at all. Just very quickly draw a grid of 16. Like, just draw some lines down and some lines across, so you've got 16 squares, and then you can, you can just play using that, right? So if I'm going to ask you some questions. If you think the answer's orange and you haven't got the printout, just cross out the, like, top left box, and then you'll know. So... I want you to tell me when you've got four in a row, right? So across counts, up and down counts, diagonally counts. I'm going to read you some questions, cross off the answer. And then as soon as you've got four in a row, shout bingo into the ether. OK, right. There's a place in the Pacific Ocean that contains 76% of the world's coral species. But what shape is it? There's a place in the Pacific Ocean that contains 76% of the world's coral species. What shape is it? Is it from left uh, to right? Top to bottom, <gasps> orange, barrier, plant, circle, mouth, triangle, atoll, seafood, tentacle, animal, macro, algae, fringing, fungus, Suzanne, square, or mineral. Which one is it? Cross it out. It's weird that the live viewing numbers have just gone right up, like people could tell we were playing bingo. How do people do that? You got the answer? Place in the Pacific Ocean, incredibly famous for having lots of different coral species. What shape is it? Moving on. What is the name of the tiny plant-like things living in the coral's cells? So coral is not alone. It's got some tiny plant-like things living in it. But what is the name of those little tiny living things? Is it <gasps> orange barrier plant circle mouth triangle atoll seafood tentacle animal macroalgae fringing fungus xanthale square or mineral? Moving on. A coral's anus is also its what? A coral's anus is also its what? So a coral has an anus, but its anus is doubling up as something else. Is it the orange barrier plant? So God's mouth, you know what I mean? Okay, moving on. <laughs> Everyone in the Facebook lesson that we did that time was calling it the anus, which is a bit of a clue. <laughs> what colour are a coral cells? Cross off the answer. What colour are a coral's cells? Orange, barrier, but well, is it orange or see-through? Basically, those are the options, aren't they? What colour are coral cells? Three, two, one. Moving on. Is a coral a plant, an animal, a mineral, or a fungus? Is a coral a plant, an animal, a mineral, or a fungus? Definitely giving you the answer to this lesson if you didn't know before. Plant, animal, mineral, or fungus? Quick, find it. Have you crossed it off? Okay, good. Let's move on. The type of reef that is usually a circle is called a what reef? Which of these words describes the type of reef that is usually a circle? Find it, cross it off. That's it. Have you done it? All right, so hopefully you are shouting bingo at me now. If you are shouting bingo, well, you might be right or you might still be wrong. Oh, yeah, let's see. So the first one, the name of the place in the Pacific Ocean that contains 76% uh, of the world's coral species is the coral triangle. That's right. Uh, the tiny plant-like things living in the coral cells are zooxanthellae. So macroalgae is like the posh scientific word for, for seaweed, right? Uh, zooxanthellae are the teeny tiny little plant-like things. 
A coral's anus is also its mouth. Yes, if you only got one right, surely it was that one. The colour of coral cells. Coral cells are Sifu. It's the zooxanthellae that have the beautiful colours. Uh, a coral is an animal. And the type of reef that is a circle is the atoll reef. So well done if you got that line of four across. That was the correct answer. All right, shall we play a quick game of what's the word? Let's play what's the word. So I'm going to ask you a question and the answer is going to relate to a letter. And as we go through, you have to write the letter that matches the right answer. And in the end, you will have a word. I'm good at English as well as science. Okay, there's no such thing as subjects. So you, there will be a lot of different words that you could have, but some of the words will be wrong. Okay. See if you get the correct word at the end. Let's have a go. Right. <clears throat> Where would you not find tropical reef building coral? Where would you not find tropical reef building coral? Reef building coral actually found all over the place, but tropical, not so much. So you've got the letter T, which is over on the east coast of the continent of South America. You've got the letter P, which is off the east coast of the continent of Africa. And you've got the letter S, which is down in Antarctica. Which one of those letters is not near where you'd find tropical reef building coral? P, S or T. Moving on. Which of these letters is where the Great Barrier Reef is? Where is the Great Barrier Reef? So we've discussed how Australia looks a little bit like a cat with ears. It's kind of more like a horse, isn't it? So is it where W is, just off the east coast of this ear? Is it kind of where the horse's neck is, near this little island, labelled H? Or is it inland, labelled L? Which letter is where the Great Barrier Reef is? It's quite tough, though, actually. Next question. Coral and Suzanthalae help each other to survive. But what is the name of this kind of relationship? Coral and Suzanthalae uh, help each other to survive. What's it called when living things kind of work together to help each other to survive? Is it A, a symbolic relationship, E, a symbiotic relationship, or O, a symbo relationship? Which letter matches the right answer? Symbolic, symbiotic, or symbo? Moving on. What happens during coral bleaching? If it, you think the zooxanthellae chooses to leave the coral, write an O. If you think, think the zooxanthellae kills the coral, write an A. And if you think the coral sends the zooxanthellae away, then write an E. I'm sorry if this dripping tap is driving you uh, insane, then I am catching the water and I'm using it on my houseplants. If that causes, if that makes it slightly less stressful to listen to, it is doing my head in, the plumber's coming tomorrow. Okay, have you got that answer? Let's move on. This is the last one. What causes most coral bleaching? If you think that it's parrotfish eating the coral, write an R. If you think it's acid running into the oceans, write a P. And if you think it's the oceans getting warmer, then write a T. And the word that you should have is sweet. You should have the word sweet, all right? The... Uh, you, you do get very important reef building coral, and I'm sad that we haven't gone through it uh, at all in this module, down in Antarctica. Um, Greenpeace have been studying it. It's incredibly beautiful and important, but it's not tropical reef building coral. That's just on the equator. So that was the letter S. Uh, yes, the Great Barrier Reef is up near the ear of the cat. So that's the letter W. Um, it's a symbiotic relationship. And uh, coral bleaching is, do you remember, it's when um, the generally the ocean is getting warmer or there's too much light getting to the coral so the zooxanthellae because they're like plants they give off loads of oxygen and the coral can't handle it, it gets stressed and it kicks the zooxanthellae out and coral bleaching a pair of fish biting some coral might cause the coral to to bleach the zooxanthellae leave so you can see the skeleton through the see-through cells of the coral um, but it's the oceans getting warmer that causes the vast majority of coral bleaching okay super mean little quiz now and then we'll do a little bit of jumping around and then we'll finish. Um, which of these six countries are in the Coral Triangle? Which of these six countries are in the Coral Triangle? If you've got the sheet, it might be better just to cross off the ones you don't think are in the Coral Triangle. The Philippines, Indonesia, Maldives, India, Bahamas, Solomon Islands, Timor-Leste, Malaysia, Australia and Papua New Guinea. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Philippines definitely are. Indonesia, yes. Timor-Leste, absolutely. The Solomon Islands, yes. Malaysia and Papua New Guinea. Well done if you got those. Let's get rid of the other ones. Okay, let's spread them out a little bit. <laughs> and do, uh, uh, I'm going to take one away and see if you can guess which one I've taken away or work out which one I've taken away. So as a reminder, here's the Coral Triangle. Someone pointing out on Facebook, it's not a triangle, but never mind. Um, Australia is not in the Coral Triangle. The Coral Triangle is just above Australia. Do you remember we drew the Solomon Islands, just as little dashes, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, sort of sharing this land mass here with Indonesia. You've got Timor-Leste down here, just the very top of Malaysia here, and then the rest is Indonesia. So which one have I taken away? Which country that is in the Coral Triangle is missing? Five seconds. It's the Solomon Islands. Fun turn if you got that. Next one. Which one's missing? Five, four, three, I mean, you probably saw it just as a bit. <laughs> Indonesia was the one that was missing. All right, for the last one, let's make it a bit harder. Let's mix it up a bit. Now, which one's missing? That is hard, isn't it? Five, four, it was Timor Lest or East East, if you're an English speaker. <laughs> right. I thought we would finish um, the lesson a little bit of jumping around because we, we used to do this more. We don't move around in lessons anymore. And to be honest, um, like, are you there? That was weird. It said it wasn't unable to connect. YouTube doesn't usually play that silly game. Uh, we're going to do some jumping and then I'm going to say a statement. And if you think I'm lying, I want you to sit down. And if you think I'm telling the truth, I want you to stand up, okay? So if I'm lying, just sit down. And if I'm telling the truth, stand up. But I'll count you down. I'll say three, two, one, and then you need to make a fast decision, okay? All right, so I get jumping. Okay, uh, first, first statement. The Great Barrier Reef can be seen from space. The Great Barrier Reef, the biggest coral reef in the world, can be seen from space. Am I telling the truth or am I lying? If I'm lying, sit down. If I'm telling the truth, stay standing up. Three, two, one, go. If you're sitting down, you are wrong. The Great Barrier Reef can be seen from space. Great Wall of China, no, it's a myth. Great Barrier Reef, yes, it can be seen from space. Okay, start jumping again. <clears throat> right, uh, acidification. Ocean acidification means the oceans are becoming acidic. If I'm lying, sit down. And if I'm telling the truth, stay standing up. Acidification means the oceans are becoming acidic. Three, two, one. What are you doing? You should be sitting down. The oceans are not becoming acidic. So we looked at, was it only last lesson, how alkali is kind of the opposite of acid and the oceans are actually uh, alkali. They're not acidic, but they are becoming slightly more acidic than they were before. So this is alkali. If this is acid and neutrals in the middle, the oceans are still alkali, but yeah, they're becoming more acidic than they were before. So. You should be sitting down. It's not true. We're not like going to be swimming in acid, just slightly more acidic. We've looked at why that is still very, very bad for coral. Coral reefs. Okay, I definitely need to do this more. Right, come on, <laughs> jump, jump with me. I can see you not jumping. Stand up and jump. Adults as well. Every, everybody jumping, <laughs> unless unless you can't. That's fine. Uh, next statement. <sighs> ocean acidification means the oceans are becoming less alkali. Ocean acidification means the oceans are becoming less alkali. Am I telling the truth or am I lying? Three, are the oceans becoming less alkali? Two, one. Are you standing up or sitting down? Uh, you should be standing up. They are becoming less alkali as they become more acidic. They are becoming less alkali. Keep jumping. Okay, jump, 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 jump. True or false, am I lying? The colour of a coral skeleton is white. The colour of a coral skeleton is white. Am I lying? Sit down. Am I telling the truth? Stand up. Three, two, one. You should be standing up. They are white. So the Zuzanza, they have these beautiful colours. And when they leave the coral, this, the, uh, the cells of the coral are actually see-through, right? So you can see the skeleton through the coral. Okay, one more. Let's go. 
<laughs> most coral reefs are found 70 meters below the surface of the ocean or lower. Most coral reefs are found 70 meters below the surface of the ocean or lower. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? Three, two, one, go! You, sh you should be sitting down. They are found about 70 meters below the surface of the ocean or higher, the tropical coral reefs that we've been learning about. 70 meters is like the limit because they need light. Because they've got Suzanne living with them that are like plants and need, need uh, sunlight to make sugars. Okay, right you lot, that is the end of our coral reefs module. Thank you so much for joining me. Honestly, I've had such a good time. I knew absolutely nothing about coral reefs at all, except they were important and they were dying. And now I feel a little bit more uh, empowered to do things uh, to help them and to spread the word after uh, all these lessons. So thank you so much. If, it, if I mean, the, the, the biggest thanks has to go to the people that are supporting me, the people that are paying me five pounds a month. If you weren't paying me five pounds a month, I would not be able to do any of these lessons. I would still be teaching in the classroom and I would have zero time to look up any cool stuff. I'd just be like, teachy, 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 uh, so that people could pass their exams. So it is just so appreciated. If you're watching this and you receive uh, Theatre of Science magazine through the post, that means you are paying my wages and I very much appreciate it. I'm just going to Facebook to see uh, if anyone is saying hello. Um, uh, if anyone is watching live, you can go to, oh, there's loads of comments, brilliant. No, let's listen. Oh, Alexis, I know, right? I'll be back in the summer though, uh, in September. Don't know what we're gonna be learning about actually. I feel like we might be due a bit more chemistry. It's been a while since we did chemistry. Uh, <laughs> Alexis is shouting bingo, excellent. Yeah, Alexis, I know, right? We've gotta go fossil hunting. It's the most fun thing to do during the summer. You did your shells in different levels of acid. Oh, really? And citric acid was the most destroying one. That's nice. Hello, Suki and Arza and Eunice and Salah. I have my very own real life wormy. What? Oh, look, it's a picture of a wormery. Oh, hello, Thomas and Karis. Hello, so I'm not looking at you, it's very rude. Hello, everybody, hello. All right, Thomas and Karis. Went to the deep. Oh, I'm so jealous. And saw lots of coral reef fish and live coral. That's a good point. I'll be so much more interested now. Whenever I've gone to anything like that, you're just like, coral, fish, fish, fish. Yeah, I'm gonna be ogling the coral now in quite a strange way. Oh, hello, yeah, hello, Mary, Aunt Suze, hiya. Oh, Rue's watching live, hiya, Rue, hello. And Imogen and Ophelia, hello. And uh, Lily, you, I'm always late as well, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, if you want to support me, you totally can. Go to my About section, uh, it's on YouTube somewhere, and it's got a link to the, this website called Coffee, where you can support me. Hugely appreciated, thank you so much for joining me over all these last weeks, uh, maybe months and years for quite a lot of you. And yeah, I'm taking six weeks off, starting from next week to parent my children and also write the supporter magazine that desperately needs to be with you. And then I'll be back in September. At, it's the week starting, I think the 4th of September, 2023, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll see you soon. Have a lovely, lovely summer. Bye everyone.